Uh, thank you, Chairwoman. Uh, thank to Chairwoman Waters for creating this subcommittee. Thank you, Chairwoman Beatty, for your continued leadership in this space. And thank you to all of those uh, who have come here today, not only to testify, but for what you're doing each and every day. Uh, we are certainly uh, grateful for your counsel and your expertise in your presentation today. And I apologize that I had to step out uh, for a moment. I'm working with some restaurant workers to eliminate the sub-minimum wage. Uh, which in many ways, uh, given who represents that workforce, contributes to the very issue we're discussing today. So, um, But over the past four decades, wealth and income inequality has skyrocketed. Nearly half of all wealth grown since 1986, as you well know, has gone to the top 1% of our households, while the top 1% controls 42% of the nation's wealth. Uh, the wealth held by the bottom 90% of Americans is rapidly shrinking. Uh, you've spoken about my, my district already. Uh, some of you in your uh, testimony here today, the Massachusetts 7th Congressional District, which includes Boston, uh, one of the most diverse and unequal districts in the nation. White households have a net worth of $247,500, while black households have a median net worth of just $8. Yes, you heard that correctly, and it always bears repeating because it is sobering and devastating uh, confirmation of the work that we have to do. Now, none of this happens in a vacuum. Uh, this reality is as much an indictment of our inaction as it is the federal government's role in selectively facilitating the wealth building of some while actively excluding others. But we're not here today just to double down on the problem. We're here to be prescriptive and solution focused. And many of you have referenced uh, the legislation that I've introduced in partnership, bicameral legislation with Senator Cory Booker, uh, baby bonds. And so I just wanted to just um, uh, do a little bit of a deeper dive on that. There are some that would dismiss this baby bonds bill as another radical uh, proposal. The legislation is simple. Upon birth, every child is given a seed savings account with annual contributions from the federal government until that child turns 18 and a stable 3% return. By their 18th birthday, children from the poorest families would receive up to $47,000. That's money towards tuition, a down payment on a home, or an investment in a small business. Again, some think this is, a ra is radical. Um, but in my district, where median household income drops by $50,000 in a three-mile radius and life expectancy by 30 years, uh, we do need to be doing something radical and bold to address that. So would anyone on the panel uh, wish to speak uh, more to the scale of our nation's wealth inequality and whether or not baby bonds are a measure proportionate to the problem? So... Given the in inequitable policies that have caused the, the racial and gender wealth gaps and the magnitude that you indicated, you call it radical, I call it bold, solutions are needed. And baby bonds represent one of those bold solutions. You mentioned the, um, the data from Boston. That data was gathered by um, Derek Hamilton and Sandy Darity with the um, data collection effort that was funded by the Ford Foundation that I, that I referenced. It's information like that that lets us know just how, um, how great this problem is and that there is a strong need to, to do something about that. And, and I know that Derek um, feels that the forming of your bill um, has improved his, on his concept um, by adjusting annually the amount of the, um, that would be contributed to the endowment. So it, it, it is contributing to helping to, one, enlighten us about what's needed. Um, we need additional data. I argue that additional data is, is um, important, and your bill um, would um, ask for the Comptroller General to gather more information about providing um, additional information on the wealth of families and, and I Thank think that's, you. that's only beneficial. Thank you. And, and Mr. Asante Mohammed, uh, again, since we arrived here because of policy, the path forward is going to require policy. So in my remaining time here, do you mind just ticking off again the litany of legislative solutions that you're supportive of um, because you did include baby bonds in that? Yes, and I think, again, one of the most important things about the baby bonds proposal is that it sustained a long-term investment into households because the racial wealth divide is so deep that unless it is 
20 years or longer, having that type of investment won't deal with this massive effect of racial wealth inequality. But we also have things like a full employment with a high minimum wage, as you noted you're fighting for with restaurant workers. We also have noted Medicare for all, because Medicare, I mean, medical cost is the number one uh, source for bankruptcy. Um, we also, again, have uh, collecting data and making sure that there's actually a racial wealth divide audit of our policies, because we can look at our policies and have an understanding of who it's going to benefit more and, and whether it's going to increase the racial wealth divide or bridge it. So and H.R. 40 and Senator Warren's bill, you also support? Okay. You, you know my 10 solutions better than I do. Yes, Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I yield.